This is the Raw Misfit Show, where two long-term raw vegans explore diet and lifestyle solutions to modern-day health issues. Episode 5, How to Survive the Zombie Apocalypse as a Raw Vegan. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jeanette, also known as Misfit Vegan, and this is the Raw Misfits Show, Zombie Apocalypse Edition. So I got my army fatigues on because you know... You still got to look cute in the apocalypse, okay? Like, there's no excuses. So um, we tried to keep it cute today. And this episode is going to be about how to prepare for an emergency as a healthy vegan. Okay, so we are going to be discussing uh, three things. Food, equipment, and lifestyle changes that you want to make now. I see my friend Matt is here, my co-host, so let me bring him in. And uh, before he comes in, I want to wait. I think I have something else to say. Oh, yeah. If you stay ready, this episode is being made because... Thank you, everyone, for being here. This episode is being made because if you stay ready, then you don't have to get ready. Write that one down. Post it on your story. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> focus, Jeanette. Focus. Hey, Matt. Hey, hey what's up, everybody? What's up, Matt? Hey. Okay. So, uh, thank you so much for joining me. Um, so, uh, today's episode is very, very important, obviously, because um, it's coming. Like, whether it's an apocalypse or the Great Awakening or a, you know, food shortage or, um, or uh, you know, power outage, tornado, hurricane, whatever it is, we need to be ready. And I have so much equipment behind me, Matt. It is, you might not have had time to do that, but I literally put so much stuff in front of me. So like, I'm going to show visuals. I don't know. Nice. Um, yeah. And so, okay, let's get started, Matt. Um, I'm in charge this week, so deal with it. And um, what I'm going to do what I want to do, which is I want to answer a few questions from last week real quick. Okay. Okay. So lightning round, Matt. Let's do it. Um, quickly can you describe so this is all the questions from last week and this week if you have any questions my beautiful friends please put them in the question box below there's a little question area please put it there we will definitely get to the questions i'm serious nobody listens to me but put them there <laughs> so matt doesn't have to write them down but matt might write them down though i will i will okay thank you matt so matt can you describe a day of eating for you but like in like one minute <laughs> One minute, I can do it. Okay. So again, if you have 21 day raw transformation program, you already know how I eat. It is SFS. And that is just stands for smoothie, fruit, salad. All right. So I have a big fruit smoothie in the morning. Maybe I'll put in a table or a teaspoon or two of chia or flax. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of fruit, uh, maybe some berries and things. And then lunch, I have another big like basically a mono fruit meal. So oranges, mango, whatever, watermelon. And then for dinner, I have a big five-star salad. And so if you don't know what a five-star salad is, you got to watch more of my stuff. Uh, <laughs> but that's all I'll say. So that's, that's how I eat. If they don't know what a five-star salad is, they, <laughs> they are lame. They are I, living under a five-star rock. They will okay. not survive the apocalypse if they don't know that. Correct. Okay, Matt, what do you think about coconut aminos and coconut sugar? Uh, they're both processed foods. So I would say try to keep them out of your diet as much as possible because processed foods are not ideal. Uh, in um, becoming more sensitive to other people's energies, that's not a question. Um, trouble with when someone means what, well, that's not a question. Banana, banana flavored antibiotics? <laughs> yeah, somebody said that. We were, we were talking, I can't even remember what we were talking about, but they, they mentioned, yeah, <laughs> banana, I didn't even know that was a thing. Is that a question? Um, vitamin B anemia protein. I don't know. It says question, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have you ever dealt with anemia or helped anyone um, to get over anemia? Um, personally, I haven't coached anybody with that, but I know people that have had anemia and just going to a plant based diet, eating lots of greens and you know vegetables, they have completely taken care of that. People got to remember. Iron, you, when you eat a plant-based diet, your body is able to more appropriately regulate 
the iron absorption that you're having. And if you're getting out dairy products, dairy products do inhibit iron absorption. So if you're eating dairy products, you might have a problem with iron absorption. Thank you so much, Matt. Okay, so now we caught up on all the questions. Tessa said that was her question, the banana <laughs> antibiotics. <laughs> Tessa, boo boo, what in the actual fuck did you mean? Please <laughs> let us know. Let us know. We'll answer it. Yeah. We'll answer it. Okay, so um, <laughs> let's get started with this episode, Matt, because I am determined to do this on time this week. Okay, yes. I'm determined yes. to get to the Q&A part on time. Mm -hmm. I love uh, Naturally Fit Healthy. I love your energy, too. I could feel it from the yeah. screen. I really, I really feel it. Okay, <laughs> so Matt, um, question, uh, what are some foods that you um, have in your house or you would recommend to people to stock up on for the upcoming zombie apocalypse? All right, so I wanted to kind of tailor this towards raw vegans, but this is also, I'll also mention things just for general, um, you know, preparedness. So of course, dried fruits, you know, it's not ideal in an everyday situation, but in an emergency um, where you can't go to the store for, you know, multiple weeks at a time, if if that ever happens, hopefully it doesn't. Um, but yeah, you want to, you know, get a big box, get a case of bananas and start every week. I mean, you don't have to buy a case every week, but get, a, get extra bananas every single week. And if you have a dehydrator, you can dehydrate banana chips. I have a video on my channel showing you how to do it uh, on YouTube. And it's super easy. You can make a ton of banana chips and then you can have them in storage and you can do this with other fruits as well. Apples, mango, um, you know, all sorts of different fruits that you can have. You can also have raisins. Raisins are another long storage, you know, dried fruit that you can have. Um, and then, you know, when we get outside of the rawness, we can go to beans, rice, potatoes. Um, you know, beans and rice are gonna last the longest. Uh, but any other dried, you know, goods that you can have that you just need to add water to and and you can have those um so yeah those would be my kind of immediate things to start stocking up on is dried fruits if you can dry them yourself that's even better um beans rice and maybe some like potatoes and things okay that's such a good idea matt oh my gosh drying your own fruit i literally did not even think of that yeah that's embarrassing <laughs> But I, that was my, okay, so I'll tell you guys my number one food storage uh, stuff that I have in the house. Dried fruit is the number one thing, um, but I don't really keep too many dates in the house because I'll eat them. But I have a lot, I do have raisins and a, a bunch of other fruit, like dried fruit. But yeah, that's number one, obviously. Um, sprouting seeds is um, number two. Yeah. I'm surprised Matt didn't mention that, but you know, we can't all know everything even though i got this from him i swear i got this from him okay. i actually have it written down i just didn't my my list is really unorganized i should have organized this better you should see mine oh it my is God. A, it is a nightmare yeah. if we get through this episode yeah. alive i know it, it will be incredible my notes are in, it, disgusting okay so here we go dried fruit sprouting seeds frozen fruit mm -hmm. i have contemplated guys thank you so much for being here there's so many beautiful people here i'm trying to wave at you all but um if i miss anybody uh thank you tessa i appreciate you okay i have contemplated buying a freezer like just for durian and frozen <laughs> fruit like, because I want durian in the apocalypse, personally. Mm. I'm, I can't wait for the apocalypse. Guys, <laughs> it is going to be so much fun. Like, I don't play video games, but I feel like it's going to be like a video game. Um, and so I can't wait. And so I really want a freezer. Um, I haven't invested yet, but they're not very expensive. I would recommend if you have the space and you have the financial means, get a freezer and get some frozen fruit. You can defrost it. You can uh, get veggies. And uh, you can do what Matt said. You can... Um, dry your fruit in the dehydrate and then freeze it to make it last even longer okay um well matt didn't say that but you know <laughs> whatever okay oats are a great one mm, yeah okay beans and then matt could you please tell okay so first of all guys costco is where you want to go yeah um you want to get your beans in a bag and you want to get them dry and they last until these are good until 2025 so hopefully the apocalypse comes before then matt could you tell everyone why we want beans in a bag and not in a can 
Yeah, well, if it's in a bag, you know, if it's dry, you know, there's not going to be any added salt or whatever kind of water they're using to put in the can. Um, so really, it's just it gives you more control over what you're going to eat. And it also typically is going to last longer. Um, you know, that way, it, it's just it's and yeah, I, I would just say it's it's better controllable on your part to have, you know, you know what's in it. And it, it's not in aluminum or, you know, metal. So you're not going to have potential for uh, you know, leaching and things like that. So that's why I would get it in those. And, and also, you know, it's, it's really important to, um, to, what was I going to say? All right, go on. I'll, I'll get back to that. I forgot what I was going to say now. We were going to say my hair looks so nice, but Matt, Tess already said that. So it's... Uh, see. She's yeah. purposeless. I know, I know. Now, I would recommend you get chia seeds and yep. hemp seeds. These are two seeds that are so good for you. I, um, I, I also, you can make an easy recipe in the apocalypse. Now, you are going to need some extra equipment if there's no power. I personally recommend you get one of those blenders that are uh, battery operated. I have one, but I forgot to bring it um, out. It's in the, it's in storage. Okay, so it's literally like two AAA batteries and it's a blender. And um, it's amazing what you can do, guys, in the apocalypse. You make hemp milk, okay? And the recipe's in my free book, 100freerecipes.com. It's free, so I'm not selling nothing. But um, you put in two to four tablespoons of hemp seeds. Just put in some hemp seeds in the blender with water. Put in some dates if you want. Blend it up. You've got hemp milk. Then you take some chia seeds, about a fourth cup of chia seeds, and mix it together, leave it for an hour in the fridge. You've got your chia pudding. You, you act in cute in the apocalypse, keeping it healthy. And um, you can even add in some things in there. Like for example, I would add in like a green powder, you know, if you needed to. Um, obviously this is better in smoothies, but add a little bit, you won't even taste it. I personally like this company called OMG Superfoods. If you want, check out the link in my bio. They have some really high quality stuff. It's organic, it's um, cold pressed and uh, very, very high quality. No fillers, no sweeteners, no nonsense in these recipes, in these uh, supplements. And I don't really take these, but I have them for the apocalypse. Chlorella, I have moringa, I have um, wheatgrass powder. I don't take these things on the daily, guys. The only thing I take on the daily is daily green boost. <laughs> this is like an infomercial. Uh, but I do recommend it and I like it. And I'm also very stocked up for the apocalypse. So thank you, Jamie, the owner. He has stocked me up. I have about 10 of those. Um, so that you can put in water. I don't know what I did there. But I, that, that was me mixing the water. I got it. Yes. Yeah. So you can put it in water, drink it up. Um, I would recommend you start now because you want to acquire a taste for healthy living. That is coming up. We're going to talk about some lifestyle changes that you need to make. Yeah. Uh, but we're just talking about food for now. Let me tell you guys what else I have here. Uh, I got some nuts, uh, Brazil nuts. I got some almonds. I don't have cashews because I don't want any mucus in the apocalypse. Like I don't want to have to deal with that. You know, I want to be looking my best, feeling my best able to run. Um, what else do I have to eat here? Okay, let's talk about water. So sorry, I'm going yeah. fast, guys. But w this is emergency. I remember what I was gonna say. <laughs> yes, Matt. Okay, make sure if you are making a storage of food that you're going to plan to have for an extended amount of time. Um, if it's in like, say, um, you know, like a cardboard box or a cardboard container, like pastas come in and things, you got to make sure that you know, bugs aren't going to get into there. So cardboard containers aren't ideal uh, because bugs and different critters can get in there and ruin your food supply. So just make sure you're putting it in a container that is protected from, you know, bugs and things like that. Okay, like a Tupperware? Yeah, like a Tupperware, yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, I'm going to do that. I didn't think of that. Okay, um, this is why we're doing this show, guys. So, um, Forty wants to know, how long will the apocalypse last? Mm. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Yeah. What? Somebody just said, what apocalypse? 
you know, listen, I don't know. It's just a show. No, just kidding. It's something's coming. I'm not saying it's going to be an apocalypse, guys, but there is an emergency that seems to happen every few years. Remember the toilet paper shortage? Remember the quarantine? Remember the um, what was before this, Matt? There was there's always something. Yeah. I mean, it, it depends on where you live. There could be a hurricane, there could be a tornado, there could be any sort of natural disaster. So this applies to any of those things, not just when the zombies are, you know, crawling on your, on your yard. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so, and we'll talk about how to get rid of zombies in your yard. I yeah. do have that written down. Okay. So canned fruit is my last thing. Oh, no, so I'm, I'm sorry. Quinoa, rice. I recommend black rice. Okay, um, Matt, do you recommend any type of rice? Wild rice is good. Wild. Although that's it's more expensive. So if you're just building a, a emergency food supply, probably not what somebody's going to go for. But yeah, I would just say when you're looking at an emergency food supply, I would go with what is uh, easily stored, what is cheapest, and something that you will you know enjoy when you have to use it. So. I wrote down some quick, easy dressings that you could make in the apocalypse. So you want, if you're not going to have power, okay, and we, we'll, we will talk about that because I do have a generator and all that stuff solar powered. Um, but if you're not going to have power, you need to be able to make your dressings. Like the whole point of this episode, guys, is to show you that it's possible to be healthy no matter what. So this could apply to traveling as well, okay? And I know my, my friend Sherry, who's watching, just recently traveled as a healthy vegan. It's very possible. And here are a few dressings, I wrote down three, that do not require any blender. Okay, number one, very simple, very easy. Maple syrup, red pepper flakes, lemon, smoked paprika. Put that on your salad, mix it up. It's sweet, it's spicy, it's everything. Mm -hmm. Number two, avocado, lemon, or lime and mustard. Mix that up. Amazing. Nice. Number three. Oh, thank you. Number three, avocado, lemon or lime and red pepper flakes. Okay, so I give you guys those for free. Okay, but um, if you want any more, check out the links in my bio. I do have a free recipe book. I guess that's free as well. But um, you know, uh, honestly, we don't want to make excuses. We want to get results. Tahini is another one that I would recommend keep in the house if you can keep it in the house. I can't keep tahini in the house. Uh, it tastes like peanut butter to me and I can't be trusted around peanut butter and dates. So that's that. And then, uh, yeah, canned fruit. Okay, so I have some canned fruit in the house. I didn't buy it, my roommate bought it. She's really, I wish she was here. I would love for her to be here because she's actually really into being prepared. Ooh. Like I, just have my watermelon accessories, to be honest. That's all I bring to the table. She actually bought a bunch of um, canned fruit for me and um, pineapple, um, even like jackfruit, um, lychees, all these different canned fruit, like mixed fruits. And what I'm gonna do in the apocalypse is just wash it off. Cause there's obviously syrup and some type of sugar on there, but just wash it off. And, and you know, listen, do the best you can. We're, we're gonna be in an emergency situation. So we're not gonna be able to have the fresh, ripe, juicy, delicious, amazing fruit that we're used to. That's okay, as long as you have some type of substitute. Um, and that is that for the food. Oh, no, it's not met. I'm just kidding. Fruit <laughs> juice, Yeah. fruit juice, okay? Somebody asked earlier, how long are we preparing for? Like, that's a great question. Uh, you do what you can. You have a, some extra money, go get some extra produce. Um, shelf stable stuff yeah. okay like this lasts until 2024 it's not that's not amazing but it's not bad it's two years okay and, and plus like Matt, you said you can put that in the freezer and it'll last longer i was just gonna ask you that there you go yep um i was gonna say matt how do we make it last longer okay so that's that and um i just want to touch on something else that is not food but it's very important for the apocalypse guys i have two things that I would never be without in an emergency, okay? One of them is oil of oregano, okay? Well, too late. You should have hosted. Um, so oil of oregano, guys. And if anybody needs oil of oregano, I do actually have a absurd amount. I have about 20 bottles. I know that's crazy, but I used to run a uh, raw vegan um, like food and beverage place and we sold this. So when we went out of business, I took them all. 
obviously. <laughs> and so if anybody needs, I'll sell you one, but it's not going to be cheap. So oil of oregano, you can buy it on Amazon. This is an amazing brand. It's super strong and it, they went out of business probably because the FDA did something, you know, and um, it expires in 2023, but I'm going to keep it forever. Uh, very powerful, great for infections, great for um, candida, great for um, it's antibacterial, antifungal, everything. Matt, I assume you agree. Do you have any other words on oil of oregano? A hundred percent. Yeah, I, that is one that I always have in my house, uh, like you said, for, you know, antibacterial, antifungal purposes. You can put it, if you get a cut, you can put it on the cut. Um, you know, if you get a tummy, ache, you can take a little in your water. Um, and then there's also others that I would also recommend. Um, iodine, have a bottle of iodine, because you can use that to purify water. And you can use it on cuts as well. Um, and then also other essential oils like tea tree oil, um, colloidal silver. Um, yeah, things like that. Those are important tinctures and, um, you know, supplement type things that you should have in your house. Uh, hydrogen peroxide, you know, vi organic vinegar. Those, the, all these things can be used, you know, for... M medical purposes and also cleaning around the house if you need to. What would you use tea tree oil for specifically, Matt? Well, if I didn't have oil of oregano, that's, I would put it on a cut. Um, if I scrape myself, like I, I got cats, if they, if they scratch me, I'll put it on my, on a cut. Um, and then just any sort of like skin inflammation, you can put it on and it, it works really well for that. Okay. And my other one, so I only have two oils in my, um, what's the word? Like survival kit. That's yeah. oil of oregano and clove oil. Mm, yeah. Clove oil. You, you know about clove oil, Matt? I've used it for like oral hygiene. It's a miracle. And I have a whole entire chapter in my book, guys. It's called the Raw Vegan Beauty Book. Click the link in my bio if you want, check it out. Um, a whole entire chapter on this. It has saved my life many times. Okay, so the number one thing I do with it is when I have a toothache, yeah. okay? I've had severe tooth issues. I actually have one right now, okay? So lately I've been putting it on my tooth that is hurting very bad and mm -hmm. it literally numbs your tooth. And I, when I go to the dentist, I don't get anesthesia. I put clove oil on and I don't recommend that for everyone. You got to have, you know, severe, men serious mental toughness, but um, clove oil will save your life in an apocalypse situation where you have a toothache. Um, I think of like Castaway with Tom Hanks. Yeah. I wish he had some clove oil. Um, and then it's also really good for numbing uh, pain in the body and cuts and um, just really highly recommend you get these two oils and all the ones that Matt said as well. I'm going to get tea tree oil and iodine. I didn't know that about iodine and the water. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about water. So yeah. what is your water plan, Matt? All right. So, and, and to be, you know, full disclosure, I am still working on all this myself. So I need to get better prepared for, for this coming situation. <laughs> so, um, what I do is we do have, you know, multiple gallons of stored distilled water in glass containers that we keep on hand all the time. Um, but what I'm thinking I should probably do is go get some bottled water just for emergency situations and keep in our crawl space. Um, that way, if we run out, if there's no electricity and we can't run our distiller to distill water, we'll still have a backup you know, source that's not as ideal, but it'll still get us by if we need to. Um, also, again, with the iodine, you can, you can use that. And, and again, I don't, I don't want to give this like apocalyptic doomsday scenario like we see in the movies, because I mean, a lot, of, it's pretty unlikely that it's going to get to the point where we're all out living in the woods, right? So it could happen. So I hope it does. That yeah. sounds exciting to me. <laughs> Um, so you could use, you, you could get on Amazon some other uh, website, a, a website that I came across that I thought looked pretty good was mypatriotsupply.com. Yes. Uh, and they've got a lot of good like survival type stuff on there. Um, you can also get water purification tablets, which are just like little hydrogen peroxide tablets, I think, and that you put in 
and you let it sit like you could go get some lake water uh put it put in a couple tablets and it would take care of any of like the bacterial contamination so you'd you know you'd be able to drink it um, so you could get a couple bottles of those little tablets and they last, I think, forever. So you can just have those anytime just as a backup. And they're pretty inexpensive as well. I think uh, you can get like a two pack on Amazon for like 15 bucks or something like that. So water purification tablets, the iodine activated charcoal is another great thing to have around for, you know, just medical purposes as well as water purification purposes. Um, cheesecloth, gauze, these things you can use as filters for your water if you have a larger contaminants that you want to filter out. Um, and then also, of course, for wounds, you can use it for that. Um, again, if we're out running through the woods or chasing off, you know, beating off saber tooth tigers, we can always, you know, use these things. Um, let's see, what else did I have here? That, that's, uh, did I say bentonite clay? I would say bentonite clay as well. White willow bark tincture is another good one to have. What are you going to do with bentonite clay? Uh, if bug bites. You can put it on bug bites or, you know, things like that. That uh, it, it works really well for bug bites, actually. When I visited Florida, I got gnat or noceum bites all over me. And when I put some bentonite clay on it, it takes away the itch it really well. So where did you go to Florida? Uh, we camped in the Everglades. We camped like right on the edge of, you know, the, the wilderness. So, yeah. We were I'm down. starting to understand why you had bug bites and yeah. I've never had a bug bite. I, I know. It, it was it was fun. I enjoyed it. But uh, the tent, the windows in the tent did not keep out those little bugs. So bad planning on our part. But uh, yeah, so bentonite clay works really well for that sort of stuff. Um, and then the white willow bark tincture is a replacement for like aspirin and things like that. So it's a good pain reliever. Um, salicylic acid is the, main, the active ingredient in aspirin. So that's where they came up with aspirin is actually white willow bark. So um, you can just use that as an, a, na a more natural alternative to things like that. And I know we're on water, but I also, I wanted to say kind of in the beginning to we should always be planning for multiple situations, right? So a situation where you can't leave your home, but you still have electricity. So I can still use my water distiller in that situation, right? If I just can't go out to the store, I can still stay home and, and make pure clean water. Um, but if I'm at home without electricity, that's where a lot of these other things are gonna come into play. So, you know, and then if you, if you have to leave your home and you, there's no electricity and there's no store, then, you know, you really got to be prepared for the extreme of things. So just try and do your best to, you know, put yourself in a situation where you'll be, you know, at least somewhat prepared for several different scenarios. Yeah, love it. Um, I just uh, want to say that Sherry's probably going to kill us because I'm on the right side of the screen and you're on the left <laughs> side of the screen. Yeah. But I want my watermelon in the background, Sherry. I don't know what Matt's doing, but um, <laughs> <laughs> she's going to kill us. Anyway, um, so I have a lot going on with the water. Okay, let me start with number one. Yes, we have a storage supply of 20 uh, gallon, I think they're gallons of water from the store. They're distilled and spring water. I think that's a great idea, guys, even if you have a distiller or a filter to buy water from the store in case mm -hmm. you need it. Water is really important. Okay, there's Sherry. Okay, I'm trying Sherry. Um, <laughs> number two, I have a filter that is not electric. So the reason I, me and my roommate invested in the Berkey water filter is twofold. Number one, we wanted something without electricity. Okay. Smart. Because for the inevitable upcoming zombie apocalypse. Number two, I went to a lot of my mentors and uh, that's what they recommended. The Berkey water filter. It is very, very high quality. It is an investment. Um, it does remove, they have a fluoride filter. So I highly recommend you get both fluoride filters. Okay. Do the extra that, you know, you need to do to make sure and get cl as clean a water as possible. That being said, I think distilled water is probably the best water. Uh, Matt has convinced me, but I don't have a distiller yet. Uh, I actually do. It's in storage. 
I do have a distiller. I just don't know how to use it. Somebody gave it to me. Long story short is water is important. Um, another thing for the water, guys, life straw. I saw that my boo, Jen, wrote down in the comments, life straw. Do you guys know about this? Not sponsored. Okay, mm -hmm. like I said, and my, my roommate said I have to say it's hers. It is hers. <laughs> and she said I have to say it because I would never buy this. This is insane. But she's really like, super um prepared like she don't fuck around okay she's not like me and matt me and matt like yeah. i think we i think i should prepare more no she's prepared so like all the stuff i was saying the generator the solar powered lights that she had this is all her They're crazy but you know you need you need people like this in your life so life straw is an amazing product that you can take disgusting dirty water and turn it into clean drinking water. So she has two of these for us, and that's very valuable. And uh, I recommend it. It's like probably twenty dollars, I think. I don't know. She bought it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was another looking thing before the what I was looking those up before the show because I was looking for different things that I could recommend, and that was one of them. Has she ever used it? No, we have not been in an apocalypse situation yet. Okay, okay. I didn't know if you've tested it or not. Um, another thing that I did find that looked really uh, really promising. It's, I don't know if everybody would be able to do it though. So I found a video that I can put the link in. I don't know if I can put that in the description box of, after we post this video, but you can find on YouTube homemade water distillers. So you can make your own water distiller that does not require electricity. And the one that I really liked was a guy took a stainless steel water bottle and he fused on a so he got some copper piping and so he drilled a hole in the top of the lid put a, a copper pipe in there and then he got like another few feet of um smaller copper pipe and it wrapped around the water bottle and you can put it over a fire it boils the water and the steam rises condenses and drips out into your container so that Honestly, that is a really, really good idea. If I can figure out how to do some some welding, I'm going to definitely do that. That's a homemade water distiller. That's incredible. Yeah, and it's portable. You can take it anywhere, and you can distill your own water, you know, super easy. And so that that is something I would really recommend. I don't know how that's not uh, like a commercially available thing, because it looks really easy to do as long as you know how to use a, a welding tool which not many people probably do, but. No, incredible, guys. Okay, so we can't leave that link in the show notes, but we can leave it under the YouTube. So we'll yep. do that. We meaning Matt will do that. And um, wow, that's incredible. Active, activated charcoal is another thing on my list. It's, I forgot to get it, it's in my bathroom. Um, okay, so that's the water discussion. Anything else on, that was incredible. And I mean, there's no way that I will do that. <laughs> no way. If you would make me one, I'll buy it from you, Matt. Yeah. But like, that's not happening in my <laughs> life. Uh, it's good. In it's just good enough that I have a life straw, um, yeah. in my opinion. But I mean, like, that's absolutely incredible. I feel like you or Raw Natty Nate, you guys would do that. I, I feel like Nate, I could see Nate do that for sure. I bet he <laughs> already has one. <laughs> <laughs> I could definitely see him doing that. He is so da goddamn handy. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I know. I, he should be on this show. I bet he's got a lot of good ideas for this. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we'll do a part two. Yeah. Um, num okay. So let's move on unless you have anything else that you want to contribute as far as the food or the water or the supplements. Um, I was going to say, you know, just a benefit of having dried fruit as a, a supply of your food is that it's much lighter than canned foods. So if you have to leave your house, if you have to go camp in the woods, you're not going to want to be carrying around, you know, 50 pounds of canned goods, right? So if you can take around, you know, put a bunch of dried fruit in your backpack, that's going to be a lot of good calories and it's not going to weigh a lot. So um, that's just another reason why dehydrating some fruits and getting a good stash of that is a good idea. Yeah, great point. Great point. Okay. So, and then the white willow bark, I'm definitely going to get. I had no idea. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, somebody keeps saying, um, well, Matt, thank you for writing down these questions. But somebody keeps saying, what about, I, I thought they said, what about Suge Knight? But it said, water, water about Shungite. I read, what about Suge Knight? I don't know. Um, I don't, do you know what this is, Matt? Shungite? 
what, what is this? A filter? Um, Shungite. No, I'm not sure what that is. We got a question. How old are you guys? Sorry if that's inappropriate. Um, that is the most appropriate question we've heard all day. You can see <laughs> the messages that Matt and I get. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I am 37 years old, born 1985. And I'm 35. I was born in 1986. So we're not even two years apart. Uh, or you can't do math. Wait. True. Oh, you're turning 36 this year. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I yeah. I'll be, I'll be 36 in a few months. I can't do the math. Okay. I, so here we go. I wasn't Equipment, gonna say, guys. Gotta respect my elders. <laughs> Equipment, guys. This is important. I'm going to go first because I'm excited. Sorry, Matt. Um, and it's already 1240, which is terrible, but we're almost done. Not really. Yeah. It's terrible. Okay, so I have something called the Go Girl. Have you ever heard of this, Matt? Uh, I think I saw that on a like a midnight infomercial. Yes, you may yeah. have. So this is a fucking game changer, guys. Okay, so if you are going to be camping in the Everglades like Matt, which I would never do, but I would have to do it maybe in an apocalypse situation, right? Okay, I got this for the apocalypse. <laughs> Let me show you guys what this is. This is a this is a way that a female can go to the bathroom. Yes, it's kind of like a prosthetic penis nice. of sorts. Okay, I this get is incredible. And you know what you can do with this, guys? So much, so much. You can mm -hmm. go to a porta potty with this, a festival, yeah. a concert, Woodstock Fruit Festival. I don't use it there, but I bought it for the Woodstock Fruit Festival because I was like, oh, where do I go to the bathroom? But it turns out they have black bathrooms. They have plenty of bathrooms there, but um you in the middle of the, the woods in the in the middle of the night it, it you don't want to mess so guys get a go girl this is so valuable i can't even tell you becky just joined us becky was one of my former employees that literally changed my life becky i oh. love you so much i miss you you are hilarious and i want to do a live with you because you are the shit becky um she's a sweet older lady that i just love so much okay so the go girl very important. Um, what other equipment did I write down? Generator. I have a, um, oh my God, I'm blanking my mind. A oh, Jackery. I have a Jackery generator, which is solar powered. So do um, we. Sorry? So do we. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Can I have my own independent uh, thoughts here, Matt? No, I'm just kidding. No. Oh, you guys do have that. Okay, great. Well, listen, mine's probably the newer model. But um, yeah, no, it's really, really amazing, right? It's like the high, we did a lot of research, meaning Awa, my roommate did a lot of research <laughs> and I just paid half and um, it's incredible. I highly recommend it guys. We haven't used it yet, but like you can charge your phone, you can charge lights, you can uh, play music. Cause you know, you need music in the apocalypse. You can yeah. do everything. Jackery is the best. Somebody said, yes, yes, yes. You okay. can use it for your instant, instant pot too. If you're traveling, you want to bring an instant pot. There you go. Amazing. Uh, solar panel lights. We have these lights that uh, it's in storage, so I didn't get um, everything, but these are like um, lanterns that are solar powered. Okay, we have um, a uh, candles and matches. We have the water storage containers. Um, I'm going to leave as many links on the YouTube as possible, okay? Uh, I also wrote Ziploc bags, because I don't know why Ziploc bags seem to be very handy in the apocalypse. I, I don't know why, I just feel like it will be. Uh, and then the last equipment, oh, sleeping bag. I have an amazing sleeping bag that, again, it's in storage, and I just didn't want to bring everything out of storage, but uh, highly recommend you get yourself a sleeping bag, okay? Especially if you live in a cold climate, okay? Even if you don't live in a cold climate, you don't know what they're doing with the weather. Okay, yeah. the weather is controlled. <laughs> and um, I, I, am I the first person to tell you guys this? I don't know, but um, they can make Florida 20 degrees tomorrow, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, they can do whatever they want. So be careful guys, ice packs. Ice packs are really valuable, especially in the heat. If you live in the tropics like me, uh, you know it can get quite hot without your air conditioner, okay? And I don't even like air conditioning, but like, we use it here because it is so hot. It's so amazing. But in an emergency, you're going to need to be cooled down. So perhaps some ice packs would be really good. And finally, I promise, this is the last thing, a bidet sprayer. Yes. Okay. So Matt, could you please uh, tell us your um, experience? 
experience with, or just tell us what, what, which one you recommend or do you, re what, what's your experience with a bidet sprayer? Do you use toilet paper? What's your situation there? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to expose myself now. I, you know, people, people are so <laughs> weirded out by this. And so I haven't really talked about it, but why not? Because this is important information. All right. No, I do not use a bidet sprayer. I use water and my hand. All right. So as gross as people might think that is, it is super effective. And guess what? you no longer rely on toilet paper, which you don't know what chemicals are in that paper. You're putting that right on your mucous membrane, right? On, right on the anal membrane. So we're very, we absorb things very easily through the colon, through the anus. So when you put those, whatever chemicals are in your toilet paper, they can be absorbed very quickly. All right, so it is so freeing to not have to rely on companies to do your business right if you want to go take a poop you just need a little bit of water and i recommend distilled water you just lean over you pour some in your hand and you splash it up on on the parts there and you just clean it off and then you can have two little um so what we have is uh organic cotton pads and we just you know have those there and you can just dab yourself off and you clean up anything that was maybe left over but um, it works super good and it's not wasteful. It's not, you're not cutting down the Brazilian rainforest to wipe your butt, you know, so you're good for the environment. It's good for your health and it's good for, you know, just being prepared for not being able to go to the store and get a case of uh, toilet paper. What do you think about that? I wasn't ready. I wasn't <laughs> ready. Just remind me not to shake your hand. Yes. Also... Um, I wasn't ready. So I'm gonna to need to digest that. Um, and I'll get back to you. So right. now I'm gonna repurpose that clip for sure, though. Um, okay, so let's move on to do you have any equipment, Matt? Oh, floss. Okay, sorry. I swear I have Tourette's floss. Okay. I don't use floss anymore, guys, okay? And, and uh, the point of this show is also to help you cut down on all the products that you're constantly buying and wasting your money and wasting the Earth's resources on, okay? And so every little thing matters. What you do, what you spend your money on matters. You know, obviously we talk about animal products, right? If you buy animal products, they need to make more. What is funny, Matt? What is going on here? These comments. I wash my hands, okay? <laughs> Have you never had your hands dirty before? <laughs> Not with poop. I don't. <laughs> guys, Matt is ahead of his time. Leave him Thanks. alone. If you guys have anything to say, say it to Matt in the DMs and yeah. make it inappropriate. Okay. Yeah. Um. So you know, this is this is common in other countries, right? This is just India. A US yeah. Thing. yeah. It's just a U.S. thing where we're you know afraid. Of, also, uh, sorry not to get off on too many tangents here, but you know if if we're if, if we're eliminating correctly and we're putting the correct foods into our body our our feces is not as disgusting as we have been conditioned to believe that it is all right so just putting that out there that's where you get your b12 from yep yeah. um yeah. so uh floss guys let's let's di all digest that information we'll get back to it in another episode everybody's losing their shit I know. everyone's unsubscribing but listen <laughs> focus focus guys we're moving on from the hand poop situation. Yep. Um, floss. Okay, so this is what I use. I don't know the name of it. My dentist gave it to me for free. She felt sorry for me, I think. Um, but you can buy it in the store or online. I'll find the name of it and I'll put the link. It's an amazing tool for flossing your teeth. Highly recommend it. Oh, thank you so much. Somebody bought a badge. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Lace. Um, Lace Me Organics. Oh, yeah, thank you so much. She bought a badge the other day, too. I really appreciate you. Thank you. That will help me uh, stock up in the apocalypse. Thank you. I appreciate you. Okay, so um, uh, focus. I, I was gonna talk about a bidet sprayer, but now <laughs> I feel like uh, I ain't shit, pun intended. You know, so um, we we looked into the bays bidets. Uh, you know, when the whole you know thing started happening, where they were trying to scare everybody, um, and they got rid of all the toilet paper. We looked into the bidets, but none of them really met my my quality standards i don't want to be splashing up you know 
uh, microplastics and all this stuff and BPA or B, you know, all the other chemicals that would be in the plastic in these bidets. So that is why I opted for the most natural way possible. All right. So another, <laughs> another justification. <laughs> <laughs> the whole rest of the episode is Matt trying to justify the situation. But anyway, let's move on. Um, okay, so I want to talk about um, the uh, lifestyle changes that mm. you can make now in order to prepare yourself mentally and physically and emotionally for the upcoming emergency zombie apocalypse. I just called it that, guys. Everyone keeps asking about the zombie apocalypse. I was just calling that to be funny. It's an emergency situation. But hey, that could happen. Zombie apocalypse? Like, um, I see so many zombies out there. It like it's they're taking over. So you know, like something's something's gonna happen. Okay, Sherry still loves you, Matt. Yeah. I am. It's up for debate for me. This might be our last. Day. <laughs> Just okay, gratitude journal. Hey, I wrote followers oh, with me. That uh, I'm getting a lot of support now. Greg's done this too. Greg is in on board, and somebody else said it's just a U.S. thing. So. Greg, remind me to unfollow you as well. Okay, so gratitude journal I wrote. Um, so basically, I want you, everyone here to realize that in a state of emergency, you're gonna need to be very mentally strong. You're going to need to have your focus laser sharp on survival, on pers your perspective in life, and on gratitude. And you don't want, you can't start when it's an emergency, right? You can't start thinking differently the day shit hits the fan. Matt would know more about that. So the day she hits your hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, focus. <laughs> this is a tough one. That's a tough one to beat, Matt. I don't think I'll make another joke in this episode. So your input equals your output. Okay, guys, what you're putting in, um, <laughs> you're you're putting out. I'm thinking of like all of these jokes now. Okay, focus. So if you think about your life, okay, you have survived way worse than what is coming up. Seriously, I want everyone here to make a list of all the hard things that they've gone through. The zombie apocalypse or losing power or a hurricane is nothing compared to some shit that we have been through. Seriously, if you've been through a loss of someone in your life, if you've been through a breakup, if you've been through, um, you know, some like traumatic events in childhood, you have been through a lot, boo. You understand me? You can survive anything that comes your way. And me, I'm lucky. I've already been through the worst thing that could ever happen to me. My, you know, I lost my sister. That's the worst thing. So like everything else, like so these haters on YouTube or like any of these little bullshit things in life, it's just like, wait a minute. You think that's going to affect me? Even in a power outage or a hurricane or a zombie apocalypse. Like what? I've already been through it. So you can't, once you're a diamond, you can't get, you can't break it. You know what I'm saying? We got to make our minds diamonds. How does that happen? Pressure. Okay? Like, pressure. You got to get tough. You got to get cut. Okay? And so we'll do a whole episode on mental toughness because anybody that wipes their butt is has some serious mental toughness. <laughs> I won't let it go now, Matt. That is, that is who you are, and you are no longer Mr. Healthy. No, just uh. <laughs> Focus. Okay, Matt, do you have any? I have six, and it's already one o'clock. But <laughs> there's so much to cover. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> do you have any tips on becoming mentally tough and making lifestyle changes now to survive the zombie apocalypse? Yeah. Well, you just said it. Wipe your butt with your hand, and that'll really toughen you up. But Keep it uh, moving. But, yeah. Yeah. Besides that, um, I mean, it is so important to get fit and healthy right now. So one of the big things I wrote down, I mean, look at that. She's, she's clearly been reaching behind for something. So <laughs> um, you want to get as independent from products as you possibly can. Any product, pharmaceutical products, hygiene products, any sort of products that, you know, stimulants, processed foods, get independent from all of these things because if you depend on something outside of you um you know that's setting you up for being vulnerable in in a spot where you don't need to be vulnerable so empower yourself by getting as healthy now getting off as many medications as you possibly can and 
getting yourself in a situation where if you have to go a day or two without food, you're not going to lose your mind, right? I can go several days without food and be completely fine because I have, you know, conditioned my body in a way where it's running very efficiently. And when I don't have food for a little bit, I'm, I'm completely fine. So that would be one thing, you know, intermittent fasting, I think is a really good thing, just even for situations like this, um, because it really conditions you to be mentally tough when it comes to food. And it also conditions the rest of your body to just not always depend on consistent flow, th a flow of food, right? So really it just comes down to getting as healthy as you possibly can be so that you don't have to rely on medications and other things that won't be available if you can't get to the store or the pharmacy. Yeah, absolutely. My really great advice. And yeah, that was on my list too. Guys, the cleaner you are, the longer you can go without food in an emergency situation. Okay. Yeah. And um, I, I truly worry about the people out there that are not healthy. I truly yeah. do, because it's not your fault. You gonna get angry. You gonna get angry without your drugs. And so you wanna get off drugs now. You know, clean cells can't be mean. So what does that mean? Mean cells are very, very mean. And so you're gonna have to be level-headed and be able to survive maybe a few days without food. Some people can't even survive a few hours without food. They, yeah. you know, they, go, they miss lunch and they're like, I'm starving. <laughs> and I'm just like, do you I know what starving means? Yeah. Okay, so my number two, I swear to God, was eliminate toilet paper from your life, but we moved on from that. So let's <laughs> not even go back there. My number three is to get fit. Okay, well, why? All right, last time I checked, guys, these zombies are getting stronger and stronger every fucking day. Mm -hmm. I see them at the gym with their masks on. I mm -hmm. see them. They yeah. get in fit. They're preparing for something. So us, <laughs> us misfits, we got we to gotta do the same thing. I'm doing my push-ups every day. I'm doing my pull-ups every day. I can't do a pull-up yet, but I'm trying every day, and one day I will. I'm running. I'm swimming. I'm learn I learned how to swim because let me tell you guys right now. I moved to Florida to the ocean because zombies cannot survive in the water. Uh, whoa. You're welcome. I thought it was garlic. You thought it was what? I thought it was garlic that they can't take i don't know about yeah that's like a myth no they Are can't you? survive in the water so okay. guess fucking where i'll be matt if you need me i'll be in the motherfucking water and i learned uh, how to swim i didn't know how to swim until i moved here i never you know i'm from brooklyn we have we have pools but i never had a pool like mm -hmm. uh, ymca like i'm not gonna swim in urine although you <laughs> might be into that okay you're in therapy Yes, a focus. Okay, so uh, we, uh, yes, I learned how to swim. It's very, very important that you know how to swim. They can't survive the water. So there you go. Run mm. into the water, guys. Um, and uh, that is that about the fitness. Anyway, you just want to be fit in general because I believe that a, a strong body is a very important factor of having a strong mind. I believe you can, and I, you, somebody could prove me wrong, like maybe like Gandhi or something, but he's not here anymore. So he's not on the live. So basically, um, my mentors are people like David Goggins and Jocko Willink and um, like these really like strong, mentally tough, strong people. And so along these lines is uh, things like calisthenics and pushing yourself a little bit every day. This is going to make you so mentally tough. This is why I actually, I do have a watermelon workout program. If I hate to do this because it's not exactly something I'm proud of yet, but if you go to watermelonworkout.com, watermelonworkouts with an S dot com, uh, you can get my 30 day fit challenge, which I am still in my process of getting fit. But what I'm helping you do is get mentally tough. That's the most important thing about fitness. David Goggins doesn't work out to run marathons. David Goggins works out to deal with life. Okay. And last thing I'll say, Matt, and then I'll let you talk. Um, or if you need to, no, okay. Um, I just can't stop myself. Uh, but um, the last thing I'll say is uh, things like jujitsu, uh, things like um, self-defense might be something you really want to look into at this time while you have the time, while you still have the internet. 
hey, they could take the internet away. And somebody asked, who are they? You know who they are. Don't make me say it, Tessa. Don't no, make, you know who they are. Yeah. <laughs> the powers that be, okay? You know who they are. The people that are controlling every part of society, okay? Um, but they're not controlling our thoughts and our mind and our choices. So realize that, okay? They're controlling everything else. But um, uh, you want to start learning about self-defense. Perhaps get yourself like a weapon, taser, or, you know, I have some, some weapons and I always sleep with a large glass bottle next to my bed. In the middle of the night, somebody attacks me, fuck that, okay? And yeah, I have like a knife, I have some stuff, pepper spray. You might wanna get some of that stuff to make you um, just feel a little bit more confident in your zombie apocalypse uh, defense. Anything on that, Matt? All right, so you have a bottle of vodka at your bedside every night. All right, so yeah, um, yeah. No, I agree. <laughs> have like a knife. I, I think it's important to have, I mean, not even just for self-defense, but it, it doubles up as a self-defense tool, um, like a knife, a hatchet that you can carry around if you're, you know, out in the woods camping or surviving. Um, What's a hatchet? A, a, like a sword? It's like a small axe. Oh, an axe. Okay. Yeah, you're you're from New York, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's why I have a water bottle, a glass water bottle. I don't... Yeah. Hatchet. Yeah, like a hatchet, or uh, also I would say, you know, have camping supplies, rope, um, you know, waterproof covering. Um, what else did I have down here? Um, gloves. You want to have gloves. Um, you should have, you know, candles and matches and lighter, batteries, flashlights. You need all these, these, you know, typical things that are going to help you if the power goes out, if, you know, whatever happens, you got to. question. Yeah. What do you need gloves for that is dirtier than that situation? <laughs> I need to know. Listen, I carry around a, a pair of gloves, heavy duty gloves in my trunk of my car. So that if I ever come across an injured animal, I can put oh. those in and pick up the animal and move it to the side of the road. Now I feel shitty. Okay. Yeah, I, I did my best to make you feel bad. So <laughs> I'll do Matt's it again. A real, Matt's a better vegan than me, guys. <laughs> One for Matt. One yep. for Matt. Right. Okay. So, so yeah, do that. And then let's see. You want to have like hand warmers, gloves, socks, you know, maybe an extra pair of shoes um warm clothing a blanket things like that pepper spray mace um a gun you know like i said if, you, if you're into that sort of thing uh you know second amendment whatever um so, <laughs> um yeah those would be things that i would definitely say to have um and a bike a bike is another good thing because if you need to get around if you need to get somewhere quick without gasoline have a bike a reliable bike that you can hop on and and get get places yeah don't just have a peloton okay right. like have a real bike that's a that's a if case Allah watches this have a real bike okay <laughs> i got a bike okay so um last thing i wrote um and then we'll get to the questions guys i mean i honestly have so much more to say we'll do another episode on this but i wanted to say team up team up that's really important uh, live your life only with people you would love to be in a zombie apocalypse with. That's important because um, you're not going to be able to survive this alone. If you have toxic people in your life, you're going to want to strategize your way out, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I wrote that down. Um, negative thinking, negative attitudes in the zombie apocalypse won't work. They won't help you. Uh, it's better to be alone, honestly. Nothing will help you if you uh, have a bad mindset. Um, and then something to help. Oh my God, I put this here. This is like one of my old Tony Robbins CDs. Okay. I wanted to remind you guys, again, this was my number one thing about writing a gratitude journal, but staying positive. You're going to want to start that habit now. Start the habit now of listening to like 10 minutes a day of positive audio. It's going to really help your mindset. Okay. It's going to really, really help you in an emergency situation. You start preparing now. You don't prepare when it happens. You Sherry, Sherry loves this one. You don't get ready, you stay ready, okay? Mm -hmm. And that is all aspects of life, okay? Matt, stay ready. He don't need a bathroom. He don't, don't need, need a shit. bidet. 
He got shit on his hand. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I can't help myself, Matt. This is never going to end. A yeah. daily routine in the morning is what I'm trying to tell you guys. Mm -hmm. Have a daily routine and write it out. Where's my list? I wrote my list for you guys of all the things that um, my daily routine that, beneficial, that benefit my development, my mental toughness, yoga, tapping, positive audio, sweating every single morning, pushing myself, nature. Okay, these are things that I, my gratitude list. I do it every day, no matter what, whether I feel like it or not whether I feel like it or not. That's the difference between the people that are successful in life and the people that are not. They do it anyway. I don't always feel, we don't always feel like working out or like doing our affirmations or like doing my gratitude journal. Sometimes I don't feel like that, but I do it anyway. So do it anyway. Start a habit now that will keep you mentally focused on the positive because that's what you need. You don't even need all the stuff me and Matt just spoke about. The number, I mean, you should have something like don't be stupid but you need a positive mental attitude and then it's gonna be fun like i can't wait i can't fucking wait matt any final thoughts um yeah so definitely have a plan to meet if, if you should have a, a small community of people that you are going to get through this with so if things really if, if you know shit gets past your hand and hits the fan you're going to want to have a place where you have predetermined that you're going to meet people <laughs> and, you know, is in case there's no cell service or anything like that. So <clears throat> know where to, yeah. to go to if, if your you, cell phone not going to work. Sorry, yeah. Matt. Right. The cell phone's not going to work. So you relying on the cell phone and not going to work. Do you know people's phone numbers? Do exactly. you? Yeah. Yeah. That's the other thing you want to write down on paper, all the, phone numbers, the addresses of the people that you're going to be wanting to be in contact with and, you know, anything else you want to have a physical map that way, you know, you're not going to have GPS, you're not going to have Google maps or whatever you're using. So have a physical map, have a piece of paper with all your contact information on it of the important people that you need to be in touch with and know where you're going to go to meet with them. If you can't have any other way of communicating, um, and you want to, um, you know, don't live in fear is my, is my big thing is don't live in fear. That's also one of the big reasons why we wanted to do this show was to help you get prepared so you're not panicking when something might happen. So you want to be prepared, you know, go out and, and camp in the Everglades for a few days and just practice living on your own without electricity or anything like that and just kind of get your feet wet with it, you know, and just practice that way when it actually comes to a situation where you might need to do some of these things, you'll have some experience. Okay, so I just, Matt just kind of made me realize that even though I have all the equipment and I got the stuff, I got the solar power, I got the mental toughness, I actually don't know what I'm gonna do because I cannot camp. I tried camping once in 2017 at the Woodstock Fruit Festival. I lasted two days. I went to Ann Osborne and I begged her crying to put me in a cabin. Oh, no. So I have camped for exactly two days in my whole entire life. I don't have survival skills, Matt. So nobody have Jeanette on their immediate people to contact during the, during the collapse. <laughs> I have equipment. I have, I have fruit accessories, but I do not know how to survive honestly, but I was raised poor. And somebody said that in the comments that if yeah. you're raised poor, you might have a better chance of survival than most people. But right. I just, I can't really handle like, um, I like a bed and like a bathroom and I don't, uh, I mean, I guess I'll do what I have to do. I have the ocean. You know what guys? I just want to say real quick, I'm going to expose myself as well. <laughs> Be juicy. <laughs> My plan, if need be, you can always poop in the ocean. And I have never done it, but I have a, a former roommate that was a very, very amazing hippie. And she used to poop in the ocean. Mm. Okay, you know how you pee in the ocean, no big deal. But like, she pooped in the ocean one day, Matt, and I wasn't, I wasn't ready. <laughs> and now I know you can poop in the ocean. So I'm gonna do that personally. Oh, wait, you weren't, you weren't ready? As, did she poop next to you or? No, but she told me while she was doing it. And I was like, I was I didn't know that was possible. I didn't know what I signed up for. You know, <laughs> I didn't really know her before I moved in with her. So anyway, long story short is 
if you don't want to go full hand like Matt, you can poop in the ocean mm. or in a bathtub, but that seems very disgusting. I'm thinking ocean. Yeah. I'm thinking ocean. <laughs> yeah. if, if you're in the bathtub, just go to the toilet. <laughs> what was the point of going in the bathtub? I don't know. That was weird. <laughs> okay, let's not, <laughs> let's not talk about weird uh, here, sir. Now, right, let's get to the questions, please. It's 108. I'm sorry, right. guys. I'm sorry. All right. <clears throat> I'm waiting for you. It's you. This... It's me. What do you mean? Do we? Okay. Wait, do we have any questions from today that you might have noticed? Okay. So, yes. Well, I, I didn't. There was a lot that I think I know. I, I know. I, think I missed a lot. <laughs> and I really don't appreciate Instagram not letting me scroll back up. I can only see like four the oh. most. So. Oh, I can see them all then. I'll do it then. Okay. Okay. Well, what I did catch was what nuts are good and what to stay away from. So what nuts do you consume? I know you said you stay away from the cashews. Are there any other nuts that you stay away from and which ones do you enjoy? Okay, so um, this is a good question. The only nut that I truly do not eat is cashews. All the other ones I'm okay with cashews and, and it's personal to me. Okay, cashews cause me to have mucus in my body if i eat cashews today tomorrow i will wake up with like a, a sniffle mm -hmm. and like i don't i have a very high standard of living okay and i don't want to wake up at all with any type of puffiness on my eyes or any type of like i don't i don't want that that's no that's average i don't live my life in an average way and so that's the only nut that i stay away from my favorites for sure um, well, I love seeds more. So hemp seeds, sesame seeds, sunflower seeds. I make dressings with these mostly. But since Matt came out with his book, click the link in his bio, 21 Day Transformation, Raw Transformation, I've been using Brazil nuts because I never knew that you can use Brazil nuts as a base. And it's been really nice. Um, I really like it. And that's pretty much it for me and the nuts. Cool. I would agree. Same here. Okay, so now I will look at questions. Oh, that's why you looked at me like, uh, Jeanette, what the fuck? Yeah, okay. anything. I'll, I do have a few more. Um, oh, that's cool. You said email urinals are so cool. So I think you'll appreciate that. Wait, Listen. what was it? Female urinals are so cool. What's a female urinal? I'm confused right now. Maybe she means your prosthetic penis. Oh, 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 oh. My, my penis, my fake penis. So, um, <laughs> so I personally recommend guys that we all, um, get this. It will truly entertain you to no end because just practicing using it alone. is so empowering. It's, it's amazing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, somebody said I have an LL bean sleeping bag. Yeah. So that's a high quality L for sure. I wish I knew what mine was. Um, do you have any recommendations, Matt? Uh, no, I, I'm not very familiar with sleeping bags, but I'll go with the LL Bean. Sounds, sounds like a nice one. Yes, yes. Um, okay, and any other questions? Somebody said garlic. It was Hoppy Mummy, or Hoopy Mummy, I think. Uh, garlic is for vampires. So when I said garlic for the, you said garlic, or you said uh, va uh, <laughs> zombies can't survive the water. I think you were thinking of the Wicked Witch of the West. That's... Uh, she can't survive the water unless maybe she had offspring and they turned No, I read this somewhere on a crazy conspiracy website. Zombies okay. cannot survive in water, Matt. I believe you. I but believe you, you. But Matt doesn't have to worry about anyone going near him with his situation. So um, he I, has I, it good. He's good. Exactly. Exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then somebody asked what can't survive the water. So it was the zombies and the, the Wicked Witch. So yes. that's what we got. Thank you, Matt. I'm looking for questions, but while I'm looking, can you please, t and thank you so much, Matt, for writing those questions down. Yeah. Um, can you please talk about, I don't know if you were going to mention the tampon situation, mm. but it was on my list <clears throat> and uh, yeah. you also mentioned it. So why don't you uh, mention that situation, please? Um, well, I, yeah, I would just say for any woman out there that is using a tampon for their monthly cycle, that it is a really good idea to stop using tampons because most of them, especially if you're just getting a, a generic, you know, just a mainstream brand of one, 
Uh, it's full of chemicals, endocrine disruptors, hormone imbalancers, um, you know, different really toxic compounds that you should not be putting up such a sensitive area. And so definitely like Jeanette has the diva cup, I believe. And then you can also get other. He know, only knows that because I told him guys. Okay. That was a little like. <laughs> I, I was in her, I was in her room the other night. <laughs> That was a little much. Like people are gonna, <laughs> people are gonna want to know how you know that. I told right. them. Yeah, she told me. <clears throat> um, so yeah, definitely look for alternative solutions to that. Um, you can use even just like a organic cotton, like a pad that you can, you know, fixate in in your area. So. Um, I'm sure I'm sure there's plenty of women out there that know how to do this better than I do. But I just want to let people that aren't aware understand how toxic uh, just regular tampons can be. Yes. Um, Brazil nuts are great for your thyroid. Okay, so you answer, we, we answered all the questions. You actually got them all, except for one. And I still don't know, but a goddess on earth, which I love that name so much. <clears throat> I know a hippie that changed her name to goddess on her motherfucking driver's license. <laughs> she, yeah, she's not playing around. So what does shungite do to water? A shungite has the ability to clean the water, removing almost all harmful uh, organic compounds. Do you sell this? Wait, it sounds like you sell this. Um, I'm giving you a free shout out here. I don't know what shungite is, right? We don't know what that is. Uh, I, they, I think they mentioned what it was. I can't even remember what. I think it was. Oh, I think they said it was a... Is it a metal that is good for deflecting 5G? I think that's what they said, but I don't know anything about it. Okay, uh, we're gonna end the episode, but I do wanna say about the uh, period thing, there is also something that I've really wanted to invest in, but I haven't, and I can't remember the name now, and I wish Awa wasn't on the phone because I would ask her. It's basically underwear and shorts and uh, pants that absorb your period. Wow. And they're very expensive. It's like $60 for a pair of underwear. But mm. honestly, I think this is like genius. And I think it's amazing. And I want to get it. And I can't remember the name of it. If anybody knows the name, write it, please. They, they used to um, send commercials to me, but I, ha I guess they'll send them now. Yeah. Um, they. People mm. keep asking, who are they? Like, yeah. I, I saw another one. What, what kind of question know, is this? It's the hierarchy enslaving you. T-H-E-Y. It's an acronym. That's a good one. Did you come up with that? No, I heard it. My brother told me actually. That's a good one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! That's it. I'm gonna use that. Okay. Yeah. Can I say something about uh, your fancy pants that you just mentioned for the periods. Yes. Okay. So uh, when it comes to material like that, that is super absorbent, that you know, a lot of sporting. Don't ruin it for me. Is, it is not ideal because they are full of chemicals. That is how they get them to be so absorbent and it's not good, all right? Plus it makes you stink more. It changes the bacteria composition on your skin and it makes your body odor um, smell different and worse. So I love to, to ruin Jeanette's day. Okay, well, I didn't order them yet and maybe that's the reason. I was waiting for Matt to ruin everything that is like not organic and not natural okay so anyway um i was gonna i'm just gonna let it go with the hand thing but i was gonna say do, you know speaking of things that stink matt how do you know for sure that your hand doesn't stink i don't know how uh, do you know you have to tell me when i make it down to florida but <laughs> I'm uh, not giving you a high five. Yo, <laughs> if any, if Matt comes up to me and gives me a high five, I'm running to the ocean. Okay. <laughs> no, but um, makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. Blue always. Um, and it's the yes, reason I know my hand doesn't stink is because my poop doesn't stink. All right. If I took a poop in somebody's kitchen, they wouldn't even know. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> Please don't poop in my kitchen, Matt. Uh, I won't. I won't. Hmm. But honestly, he is right, guys. My poop does not stink at all. And it's kind of like fluffy. It's kind of like fruity. It kind of like if I eat watermelon, it kind of is like watermelon, but like darker. And I'm like, huh, you know, I don't know if I have it in me yet. The mental toughness level is not there yet, but perhaps in a zombie apocalypse, I will have to do that. And now I know I can. So there you go. I yep. think I'd need survival skills to live with Matt. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so that's why Matt has a cat um, box in his kitchen. Now I understand. Exactly. Uh, now I get it. Okay. Yes. So, <laughs> so also, uh, you might want to consider growing things yourself, guys. I forgot to say this, but yeah. you know, it's a good idea. Obviously, we all want to have a tropical fruit farm like Fully Raw Christina, right? But in the meantime. You can grow herbs and sprouts and microgreens and celery and lemons and limes are very, very, um, they grow very fast inside in baby trees. You can get, uh, buy dwarf lemon and lime uh, trees. Green onions is another one. Start to find the little things you can do, the little things that you can do to prepare you mentally, physically, emotionally for what might and most likely will occur in your life. You know, um, another thing that David Goggins taught me is that life is coming for you, boo. And if you're not ready, you could break down. You could have a mental breakdown. And I don't know if anybody knows anyone who had one, but I've known people who lost their shit. They lost it. They didn't know what to do. And they lost their job. They lost, they ruined their relationship. They, um, they went crazy because like shit happens. And that's why I work out every day, honestly. That's my number one mental toughness hack. Work out every day and push yourself a little bit every day. Every time you don't wanna do something, do it. So right after this live, I want you to do something you need to do that's good for you that you don't wanna do. Lance, what's up, boo? Lance is my number one since day, up, day one. A1 nice. since day one. Um, I love you, Lance. Thank you so much. I can't wait to see you in Australia one day. Okay, that's it. I think that's it, Matt. We did get one more question. <clears throat> oh, Matt's so on top of it. Iris Moonco asked, are bamboo cloth pads okay to use? I don't know. Ask Matt. Sorry to, to ruin the, the party again, but I would stay away from bamboo, bamboo products for clothing and anything that's going to be touching your body uh, regularly, especially in the vaginal area. Uh, bamboo products, they, the process they go through to make these bamboo like clothing, it's super toxic. All right. So I would go with cotton, hemp, cotton and hemp are, are like the two ones that I think are the best. I know hemp is like impossible. It's super expensive. Um, so hundred percent cotton, if you can just stick with natural fibers, that is going to be the best way to go. Um, and organic, if at all possible. I just wear fruit personally. I would recommend fruit. Find a nude beach, go get some fruit, eat it, be cute, and call it a day. Who cares about this organic bamboo hemp nonsense that Matt so smart knows all about? You don't need to be smart to know that fruit is the best clothing if needed. Guys, I love you. I thank you so much. Nicole, definitely watch this from the beginning. It was such a good one. And I want to leave everybody um, with the image of Matt wiping his butt with his hand. Do you use both hands or just one? Just one, yeah. I, I pour with one hand. I pour the water with one hand and I, you know, use the other hand to to clean me up. Which is honestly, there's like hardly anything there anyways, right? So again, you don't we don't have to food, justify it, Matt. We don't need <laughs> any more details, but honestly, I will be thinking about this all day. So Good. thank you so much, Matt, for that visual. Thank you so much to everyone who is here, uh, who is um, being there striving to know better, do better, learn more every day, become their greatest version. You are my people. I love people like this. And I thank you so much for watching 40. Thank you for being here. And I just want to remind you that if you stay ready, you do not have to get ready. Have a beautiful day. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.